protein drug delivery. Nicole Nishan, Leibniz Institute for Molecular Pharmacology, Berlin. Welcome, everybody. Last year, 25% uh, 50, of the 100 top-selling drugs were protein drugs. So protein drugs are on the rise, and this is for good reason. They are highly specific for their target. They are highly potent and non-toxic. Taken together, they have a very high effect, but very low side effect, the perfect drug. But they come with one big limitation. Proteins cannot enter cells. If a cell is taking up a protein, it does it by endocytosis, which is basically uh, that the cell is digesting the protein, it's taking it uh, into pieces, into amino acids, and the protein loses all of its function. So if we want to enter the cell with our uh, protein drugs, we need some sort of super carrier that can transport our protein drug uh, through the cellular wall into the cytosol. And to really show you how big the challenge here is, I put now a, a picture that is more in proportion of luggage to carrier, and this would be like this. Proteins are really huge, so if we want to effectively get them into the cell, we need a really potent carrier. So how to do it? Our idea is to use a positive charge disk that is consisting out of a cyclic peptide that has a very high density of positive charge on it. And this will be our carrier. And now out of, uh, for a proof of principle experiment, we attach this to a protein, and uh, this protein is uh, three in one. This model protein is uh, a cargo because it's a big protein, but also it's a fluorophore, so we can use microscopy. And also, as long as we see it is fluorescent, we know that it's functional and it has not been digested. Now let's go to the result. On the top, you see a conventional carrier. None of the cells was entered with a protein drug. Conventional carriers can only, only very vaguely enter the cells. But with our positive charge disk, most of the cells are transfected. To show this in numbers, where conventional carriers only reached 1% of the cells, we reached 84%. So let me show you who the team was. Uh, it would be Henry Hurst, Francesco Natale, Christina Cardoso, and Christian Hackenberger. And um, yeah, I would be glad to take questions. Uh, how versatile is your carrier? You mean uh, to the protein? Yeah. It depends on the size. The bigger the size, the more difficult. The smaller the size, the more easy. So right now we have the proof of principle and cells. Next step is to do it in vivo with ther therapeutic proteins. If you want to use this on patients, I'm assuming that your drug is carried by the vascular system. How do you uh, get across the endothelial barrier? That's it. It can magically get through, uh, uh, the, through the cell wall. So if you, you, you mean you want to get to bra brain targets? For, for brain targets, probably not. But for everything else in your body, like uh, different cells that you have everywhere else except for the brain. A, prote a protein has four structures, primary, secondary, tertiary, quartary. All of them are intact? Protein yes. is still working? Yes. If you break the quartary structure of green fluorescent protein, it's not fluorescent anymore. Last question. So what's the advantage to use this uh, positive disk compared to just have four arginine? Uh, this is what was the conventional carrier. It was nine arginines. Fantastic. Thank you very much.